PCCCF is an organization of uh, Filipino-American leaders working toward a main goal of establishing a free medical clinic. Back in the 1960s, I was exposed to the poorest of the poor, and I felt that there was a need of the community. I simply feel that I must give all I can, by all the means I can, to help serve the uninsured, the underserved, and the less fortunate citizens of the greater Milwaukee community. So urged by my desire to give back, I organized and founded the Free Medical Clinic, which is on 535 North 27th Street. In addition to giving me just free medications and medical services to our patients, we encourage them to explore possibilities of getting medical aid from the state and also we try to hook up with uh, social services of different hospitals to teach us how to educate our patients to be more self-sufficient. After seven full years of existence of the free medical clinic, I am very proud to say that uh, about 1,500 patients have visited the clinic nearly 3,000 times, which translate to over $366,000 worth of medical services. This is easily duplicable. There's a lot of patients out there who cannot access medical care mainly because of the cost. I would encourage other people who can do what I'm doing because a lot of uh, patients really need help. My name is Stella Love and I'm the owner and operator of the Ponderosa Steakhouse Restaurant. Ponderosa was looking for someone similar to my background, uh, leadership in different organizations, and my main concern was to be a good leader in giving jobs and training to other young people in Milwaukee. I'm the only African-American woman that owned a Ponderosa. I feel very blessed, privileged, and always wanted to be first in anything that I do in life. My Ponderosa is very unique with a great tasting uh, Southern cuisine, uh, turnips and mustard greens and uh, smothered chicken, uh, of course fried chicken, candy yams, uh, candy apples, uh, lima beans, black eyed peas, uh, smoked rib tips, peach cobbler, so you name it, we have it. My food is great. My service is great, and it is a meeting place. It's a lighthouse in the community, so, so it's just not a restaurant. Ponderosa was a pilot program in the lower King Drive. If you look around us, if you go come down King Drive from downtown, there's new development, new businesses open, new jobs, more jobs. From my standpoint, as an owner and a person that live in the community, uh, it has been rewarding for me to take young people, people that never had jobs before, to take them and train them and develop them. And I have still have over 12 people that's beginning from 2002, the day we opened, that's still with me. And I have made a difference in their lives and their families. And I encourage people to think about their vision, uh, wake up their potentials, and go for it. And make their dreams come true. Because when your dreams come true, other people benefit. 16th Street Community Health Center is a primary health care provider and it serves the population and the residents on the near south side of Milwaukee. It is a very unique public health center. It has been in existence since 1969. It did not have at the time a series of programs that really reached out to the community to look at some of the environmental conditions that may give rise to poor health outcomes. I had been approached by the senior management at the 16th Street uh, Center to develop a, a concept that may get at uh, looking at some of the environmental conditions on the near south side. Well, one of the key uh, findings of our environmental assessment was that the near south side of Milwaukee had the most uh, concentrated number of brownfield sites and we identified the key properties or lands that we would want to focus on 
to begin the effort to revitalize and restore them. As we got into that process, it was clear to all of us that the Menominee Valley was really one of the prime areas that we should focus our efforts on. And one of the key outcomes of that was we created uh, this private-public partnership, the Menominee Valley Partners, that has evolved into really practical and very far-sighted investments. And now, after a couple of years, we've been very successful in bringing the community together to focus on the challenges that the Kinnickinick represents. The way that I approach trying to uh, lead is trying to get uh, appropriate people to the table. One of the things that we always look for is to formally engage the community and the residents who live there in what we're trying to do. And the more that we've seen in the initiatives that we've been involved, where the people who live in the community are benefiting, it makes it a, a far stronger, far more powerful set of uh, interest that can make things happen. Altera Coffee needed a new uh, production facility for the past number of years um, and after quite a bit of searching we finally found a place that we could move all of our production and also all of our people. It really was designed to present a variety of facades as you progress down Humboldt Avenue from north to south. Uh, you begin on the immediate northeast corner, uh, obviously the cafe is there. Um, next stop, uh, moving south, is a nice uh, three-sided courtyard area where outdoor seating is provided for both the cafe and for the next structure to the south, which is the Loop Yarn Shop. And then next to the south is yet another facade with a distinct set of materials. Altera uh, has always pursued energy efficiency uh, and uh, quality workspaces, so everything from the great light that is brought into the workspaces to the quality of the HVAC units, uh, both from an efficiency and air quality standpoint, the quality of the lighting, the, the amount of glazing that we employed, uh, the very high R value air barrier uh, wall panels we employed, all of these things help to create really, really great workspaces. Some of that is natural to Altera, but certainly uh, using the Green Building Council's LEADS program helped us to uh, solidify these things and helped us to work them into the plans at a very early stage. This project uh, we hope to be quite catalytic for the neighborhood. The, the cafe is obviously open early and open late. Uh, the Loop Yarn Shop occupies great retail hours. Our wholesale coffee roasting operations uh, run early to late. Our bakery pretty much plugs in every other possible hour. So really we have a 24-hour facility here uh, and have brought retail to the street that was not previously there. There's an element of security, there's an element of enlivenment. Uh, just bringing more bodies and people onto the street helps to create the fabric of a neighborhood that's necessary. It's a poster child uh, for public-private partnerships. It's a model uh, for how these relationships can go and a model for how we can take what was a derelict, uh, contaminated uh, structure that it would be unable to be redeveloped uh, due to its cost and by participation with the city and other authorities, creating a situation where that, that became a viable economic uh, project to do. key component for West End Development Corporation and the West Point Condominium Project is home ownership. It's about 80-20 throughout the near west side where 80% of the people actually live there rent and we're hoping to change that because that produces a healthier neighborhood. The property internally had to go through a major rehab and on the exterior the facade went through a major rehab. 14 homeowners will have a chance to live on 27th Street and live near downtown. We're talking about a bi-level uh, condos uh, between 9 to 1,800 square feet. So we're excited about that, that not only are we bringing home ownership, but we're bringing affordable home ownership to the neighborhood. And we're going to have extra eyes and ears on 27th Street and people who are invested in the neighborhood to do some great things, some positive things in the neighborhood. The West Point Condominium Project is a great project to increase the home ownership, uh, to increase some control also for West End Development Co Corporation to what actually goes on on 27th Street. And as the Main Street Manager for the Sohai District, I think that's very important. We're able to set some standards uh, on the street and really 
get the neighborhood and residents involved about what's going on. We're able to paint a picture that people not only see a building in progress that's, you know, that has all the cool amenities and, and the great home ownership aspect, but it's a community-driven project. We were taking a what is traditionally a for-profit housing model, condominium living, and applying it to a neighborhood that had not yet had the opportunity to enjoy what condominium living can offer. Condominium homes at West Point were completed in early fall and the balance of the homes at West Point uh, were completed immediately thereafter. We're at a very fortunate point right now where we actually have homes that we're able to close on. We're working with a number of active buyers. I think it's, it's just a, a, a feather in our cap for not only for Western Development Corporation but also for the Near West Side community and it's, it's a, really it's a great project. Our organization provides health care and social services to those in the neighborhood who will truly be destined to live in a nursing home. Our mission is to keep people in their homes and for them to live as independently as possible. The Valit Street facility is 95,000 square feet. It was formerly used as a factory and a warehouse. This gave community care a great opportunity to be able to design the facility exactly to our specifications. The focus of our design from the very beginning is that we would create an environment that would be home-like or residential. The facility has a full adult day health center that includes a large activity room and a dining room. We have a specialized day center for our participants that have dementia. We have a dental operatory along with separate rooms that provide ancillary services such as podiatry, ophthalmology, and behavioral health. We have a full rehab gym. We also built wall size niches where we created custom wallpaper that combined photographs of our participants with the backdrops of the Milwaukee neighborhoods. Each and every day, over 200 people come and go from that facility. We've created an urban oasis with a fountain and benches, beautiful flowers. We created a canopy where we can drop our participants off and they can be covered and safe. We have a full-time security team that routinely walks the streets of our neighborhood, creating relationships. And the feedback that we have already gotten from these neighbors is that they have an increased sense of safety and security. To see how it has grown into a place of people connecting with one another just by virtue of the size of the location has drawn a lot of attention. And um, we really look forward to um, enhancing the neighborhood and contributing to the overall revitalization of the neighborhood. Park Hill Senior Apartments uh, was actually formerly known as Camilla Court and it's a 62 unit senior project and uh, it's in a pretty rough neighborhood. Uh, it was a lot rougher than it is today. There was a lot of crime, uh, a lot of blight all around and inside the project itself. It was uninhabitable. What drives Crown Court Properties is a, a Jewish precept called Tikkun Olam, which means repairing the world. The first thing we did to improve the building was to clean it up. Uh, after that, uh, we applied for different levels of financing, including tax credits, to do a complete uh, rehab of all 62 units. One of the beautiful things in the common areas is right as you walk in, we created a new uh, manager's office that now looks out into the common area as well as the entrance area to the building. Additionally, the outside entrance when you walk in now has beautiful patios and everybody is talking about the exterior. Park Hill does have several on-site services. We have uh, worked together with SEP Ministries who uh, organizes free health clinics periodically and they'll come in and do blood pressure, che blood pressure checks and get to know the tenants a little bit and be able to um, refer them to further medical care. Because the security situation changed uh, very much due in fact to our security contract, we have security um, on site and patrolling the area very, very often. It's kind of had a little bit of a ripple effect um, on the neighborhood. The houses across the street, you see a lot of uh, repair going on. For example, you can see how Habitat for Humanities built a home directly opposite our driveway on Concordia. 
You know, LISC has a uh, neighborhood effort to revitalize the Harambe North area, and we managed to host the first ice cream social at uh, Park Hill. And a lot of the neighborhood residents came in, and we got some fantastic feedback from them about how things have changed, how the block has quieted, how, how things are beginning to settle down. We are so excited that Park Hill Apartments, as of the first week in January, is 100% occupied. As a matter of fact, we have 15 people on a waiting list. Manpower chose downtown Milwaukee because we feel it really showcases us as a global company. Manpower also feels very, very strongly about the growth and economic development of downtown Milwaukee, and we know we're going to have a tremendous impact on downtown and the success of the city. The Manpower building was a 16-month construction project, and we used local employees to get the building built including apprentices in the trades through the Urban Trades Partnership Initiative. One of the terrific design elements of Manpower's new headquarters is our plaza that's very open and faces the Milwaukee River and the Milwaukee skyline. As a global company, Manpower is very serious about the environment and the sustainability of our planet. So as we were designing the building, we made the decision that we wanted to build it in an environmentally correct and sound way. LEAD, which stands for Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design, is a voluntary set of guidelines that encourages builders to build buildings that are environmentally correct. Some of the characteristics of our building are that we're going to be using 25% less energy and 40% less water than a typical building of similar size. And in addition, over 10% of the building materials contain recycled content. 90% of the workstations have direct access to natural light and sunlight, and over 50% of the wood used in our building comes from rapidly renewable forests. We wanted to have an impact on that neighborhood. We had a new neighborhood fair at our old buildings where we invited merchants and not-for-profits from the neighborhood to come meet our employees. We're using our building for many, many not-for-profit um, meetings and events. Manpower's ongoing contribution to Milwaukee's Urban Center is our volunteer program. We call it Teamworks. We volunteer at schools and lots of other not-for-profits in the neighborhood. I am very proud of our contribution. Well, the Metcalf Park Homes Owner Initiative, I, I think, accomplishes a number of different things. One of the benefits of this program is that through the 15-year period, uh, the renters pay a rent payment. And then at the end of the 15-year period, uh, the outstanding mortgage is structured in such a way that the, the renter turned homeowner can basically just maintain the same payment, uh, this time with a mortgage. We teach uh, hard skills, how to fix a screen and fix a leaky faucet, as well as, as credit counseling skills so that people truly are able to uh, not just acquire homes, but sustain uh, owning them. We have a number of uh, two, three, and four bedroom homes uh, that are single family detached homes. The homes are constructed by a group called Universal Housing Systems, which is a startup uh, company um, that's using Milwaukee laborers, teaching them hard, sustainable skills so that uh, they'll be able to work on, on a number of different housing opportunities. Our partnership with Urban League has been probably one of our most solid in our 23-year in our history as a company. Uh, one of the, the important factors to Urban League when it left its previous headquarters in Metcalf Park was that it not send the message that it was abandoning the neighborhood and I think has enhanced its uh, involvement and commitment. Part of our continuum to work with Milwaukee Urban League to make uh, improvements in Metcalf Park. The other great partner I think in this development has been the city of Milwaukee. Uh, Rather than just focusing on, on immediately the, the, the projects that we were working on, they wanted to make sure there were holistic improvements to Metcalf Park. I think over the next several years, uh, we'll see marked improvement uh, in, this, in this neighborhood. The Milwaukee Community Service Corps has a deaf and hard of hearing crew, DHH. The idea was that the Milwaukee Community Service Corps serves 
individuals who have learning disabilities, cognitive disabilities, but we are looking at the opportunity to reach those who are also disenfranchised or disconnected because of physical disabilities. So we look to the deaf and hard of hearing community as um, a mobile, um, able and capable um, group of individuals under the idea that we would form a deaf and hard of hearing crew to build housing that was accessible for households with physical disabilities. We've served about 14 uh, deaf and hard of hearing individuals and that's um, part of our overall program which has been about 100 per year. So really the magic of the deaf and hard of hearing crew is that it becomes inclusive within the greater core, within the Greater Milwaukee Community Service Corps. Deaf and hard of hearing crew has to date finished three houses. Uh, this year they're scheduled to do five. The um, skill level has grown uh, rapidly um, where they've been able to master drywalling, uh, mudding and taping, framing. It's been a ripple effect beyond just the deaf community into the ESL community. We've also, I think, blazed the trail into um, the public and private sector to understand in the trades that um, that just because somebody is deaf does not mean they are they should be excluded but rather that they're very capable of doing the job. The Milwaukee Community Service Corps has actually been reshaped um, around the deaf and hard of hearing crew because of that whole sensitivity and compassion that has developed throughout among the individuals, among the training participants that are there. Thank you. The Green Printer program was adopted in 2007 and in 2008 we are now implementing it. When the Green Print was adopted we had unanimous approval and of course it was also signed by the county executive so there was quite a mandate to do something. The Green Print legislation is a very thorough piece of legislation that very simply turns Milwaukee County green. We represent about one million people in Milwaukee County and have a billion dollar budget. We have over 600 buildings, so imagine the environmental footprint that we have. My green print has about 10 or 11 parts to it, spanning from using performance contracting to upgrade the technology in our buildings to reduce energy. We're reducing our water runoff um, in our parking lots. Also, we are looking to use fuel efficient fleet. When we make changes and we run more efficiently, there's a direct savings not only to the taxpayer, but again, we can use that money to provide other programs that people enjoy and depend on. We've begun doing the energy audits and upgrades to our build buildings. I really believe strongly in the fact that we're not just one person or a neighborhood, that we really have a worldwide impact in the small things we do day to day. I think the public has learned and is becoming more educated, and that's what I wanted was to raise the standards and show us as a role model. I feel that I was able to listen to the citizens and, and other concerns in the neighborhood and the county and, and make that into a progressive piece of legislation that really makes a difference. The green print will provide results for the citizens of Milwaukee County and I'm very proud of that. The Healthy Neighborhoods Initiative focuses on neighborhoods in the middle market and we consider those neighborhoods that have working class to moderate income households and may be vulnerable to decline. There are five neighborhoods that have been funded by the Greater Milwaukee Foundation to participate in this initiative. Those neighborhoods are Thurston Woods, the Andaris Park area, Sherman Park, Martin Drive, and Silver City. They've addressed four conditions of image, physical conditions, uh, marketing, and resident leadership and development. We look for um, change in uh, neighborhood residents' attitude. We look for improved curb appeal. Uh, we like to see an increase in the level or number of homeowners. We've also gotten the city of Milwaukee to commit to this initiative. Layton Boulevard West Neighbors worked with the Department of City Development and they've held an open house and within a couple of weeks of the open house, uh, that property was sold. And so we believe that that's an example 
of how uh, intervention by neighborhood organizations um, that have relationships with residents uh, can really help stabilize um, home ownership in a neighborhood. I believe it's a model because it's a prevention strategy and they will market and promote it um, to other individuals, um, think more positively about their neighborhoods, minimize um, what I'll call city flight. And in doing so, we think this will help increase property values, um, contribute to the city of Milwaukee's uh, tax base, and just all around have a more positive image of the city of Milwaukee. I'm David Rasich, managing partner of Plunkett Rasich Architects. So about 15 years ago, we said we were going to offer to our employees 50 hours of paid time if they would get involved with a community or charitable organization. About two and a half years ago, the mayor's, uh, mayor asked us if we wanted to get involved with one of the uh, local 